Well, hello again, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome back to the home build. Today, we're going to be talking about footings for a future back patio. So, I am actually going to be building this back patio next year, not this year, but there are a few things that I got to be thinking about for this year for the for the home build. So, a couple of those things are the footings. So, I'm going to have some footings for for posts and columns and that sort of thing. And then also I have posts inside the wall. So here in about a week or so, they're, they're gonna start framing the, the walls and I gotta get in some posts that'll carry future beams later on. I don't wanna have to tear apart walls so that I can get a beam in and make those connections, that sort of thing. I wanna get it in now during the house build. Later on, I can just on the outside cut in a, an opening for where that beam needs to slide into that's where the the posts already in the walls so those those types of things that you got to think about beforehand uh, these footings you might think oh why why am I doing it now why don't I just do it next year well this year I'd like to have a concrete patio so need to drill those holes backfill them uh, these uh, these footings are gonna be three foot diameter with uh, that are 12 uh, excuse me 20 inches thick and then it's gonna have an 18 inch uh, column on top of it and that uh, that little 18 inch column is gonna be sticking up about two feet above the, the, the patio out here so I'm gonna have a concrete patio and I want to have this concrete patio on this construction loan uh, that I'm gonna be using for this uh, uh, for this home build and I can't do that those footings later so in the correct order is drill pour the footings the columns backfill and then I can pour this patio so uh, that's the main reasons next year when I get to it uh, and I ideally next year I like to because I'm ex really excited to build it and uh, and to film it and show the process of this mortis and Tim Tim mortise and tenon uh, back patio uh, but for right now I got to focus on the house and this is portion of it uh, start with first is the layout I started on some batter boards uh, so I got two posts here I'm gonna put in a, a horizontal batter board same thing over there so that I can put a, a, a line uh, a dry line so that string line right here is called a dry line <clears throat> And it's gonna go out that direction. I'd like to, likely I would like to have it also to grade, whatever height I want that column at. So, uh, so I'll be putting some marks on there and and, uh, and that sort of thing. So the distance out for these posts from the main wall is 20 feet. Um, I'll show you a picture here in a second, but the beams are going to cantilever out another four feet, so on past, which is going to be pretty cool. And same with another post over here for this other corner. And but from this jog out, it's only 16 feet out to the post. So yeah, so I'll go ahead and I'll show you. So what I like to use, I like to use iPads. So nowadays in construction, the the technology's there. I do have paper copies. Uh, but I want to just kind of show you uh, like the iPad version. So what we have here is a draw rendering uh, of a drawing that I, I put together. So this is the back of the patio and the red is uh, the drawing for the back patio. You can see that the columns, they go down quite a ways. Uh, so from finished grade down to the bottom of those footings is about five feet because I have about three feet to four feet of fill that I put in here uh, from when we did the excavation because I want concrete back patio so those footings got to get down to good solid stable soil so it's kind of a mortise and tenon look to it here's kind of another side view of it so it's gonna have a hip a valley and a hip roof on the sides wrapping around uh, let's see I also have another rendering here so this is kind of another side view of it so I got to do stuff like that so that I can visualize in my head what size what it's gonna look like. alright so what I'm gonna show you next is 
the attachment points to the house I where uh, these beams come into play so uh, there we go so right in here where I got a sliding glass door and that beam is going to be just off to the side of that sliding glass door on the other side right there that beam there so if I zoom in on it it's gonna be on to the right or the east side of those two doors that are those windows there this side over here kind of better view at it so I got to lay out where those windows and those in that sliding glass door is so I know where those posts are gonna be and kind of looking back on this the the drawing for that I'm gonna look at the floor plan for the layout of the for that so scrolling up and right here so it's it's turned the opposite way so if I spun this around so you can have a better look at it where that door is we have a dimension of three foot seven okay so from right here from this corner measured over three foot seven you can see where I labeled out that's right at the edge <clears throat> it is a it's a vinyl uh, sliding glass door so the dimensions that are on that I believe are six uh, six foot wide uh, six foot eight tall so that w that true that is the true dimensions that's the rough opening uh, vinyl window would be and, and openings are smaller than that so therefore the trimmer the edge of the trimmer uh, for the rough opening is right here so this is my my opening my door side and it's gonna have two trimmers okay reason it's gonna have two trimmers is it's wider than six feet there should be two trimmers to carry that header then we have a king stud and then on just to the left of that king stud that's where that post is. and it's going to be a six by six uh, post and then on the other side of that it will be another king stud to help kind of lock that in place so on the other side I've already done some layout where the window is so as you can see here I got my window here one king or one trimmer because it's not as wide that it needs two uh, two uh, trimmers one king stud they're actually going to be doing a piggyback king stud because they're going to have this hold down right here okay so everything for my post got to be to the right of that so i tried not to go too far because i have this vent and that sort of thing so i have a uh, uh, my posts right here and a king stud on each side and that ties the the beam into the plates and that sort of thing so that's where I chose to put it and it gives a, a width from outside edge of post to outside edge 24 foot five and a half inches so looking at charts looking at beams uh, I always recommend have an engineer uh, do that when you're designing a building um, but I looked at engineered charts for my beams so my beams are going to be six inch so five and a half inches wide and 18 inches deep 18 inches so that's a lot it's pretty big beams but when they're spanning 20 feet that's the nest the the required uh, uh, depth of a beam for the length so Make sure you do your due diligence. Don't undersize it. Then you'll have sags, failures, that sort of thing. Plus, uh, with this mortise and tenon look that I'm after, this timber framing is also another uh, uh, term for it. I want that big beam, open beam kind of look to it. So uh, there shouldn't be any sagging or deflection in the beams. So that's what we're going with. So I did want to show you the paper copy. It's a little easier to see, but the thing about the double trimmers that I wanted to show you is there's a note over here and it's note three. 
all windows and door openings under six foot wide are to have a single two by trimmer unless noted otherwise by the engineer so uh, and when it says under six feet wide to me that means if it's six foot wide or over it has to have two so this uh um this sliding glass door opening is six foot wide so to me that interpreting that should get two trimmers so that's why that layout is what it is with two trimmers i'm confident in that so these batter boards what i've installed right to this face of the the two by four is from the stem wall there it is 20 feet and from that stem wall there is 24 feet that also should put these directly in line since it's a four in, four foot step there that also this edge of the two by four four foot four foot in is where uh, the center of our post is going to be so our, the center of our footing is going to be so uh, my batter board is going to be right up on this side so and as well as down there so i'm using my laser and i'm going to check to see where uh, finished floor is on my batter boards and go from there so first step put my grade on there so i know how far to put my uh my two by my horizontal two by four on and i like having that horizontal two by four perfectly level and leveling straight across so i also can measure from that batter board directly over to this batter board they're in line same distance out All right, so I want to give you a little idea what I'm doing. So I, I hooked the sill plate, so that means I am five and a half inches off, uh, a little further. So in a sense, burning five and a half inches. To so I should be 20 foot five and a half, which is right to the edge of my my board here. But I went ahead and came over uh, another inch. I'm a little bit off on my my mark but I scribed an arc right uh, 20 foot six and a half over there did the same thing except for that is uh, four feet further and then from there I'm gonna do a little right triangle math and I'll show you that all right so right triangle math I need two two dimensions a rise and a run because what I'm after is this diagonal right here. And where those two lines intersect, that'll create a right triangle or a 90 degree triangle. So my width from outside beam to outside beam was 24 foot five and one half inch. So where I'm actually wanting to mark is the center line. So I had to come over two and three quarters. I came over two and three quarters Okay, that total is five and a half inches. So between center line of beam to center line of beam, because that's where I want my footing is the center of that beam, is 24 feet. So pretty simple math for that. So just like this, on my construction master calculator, I have 24 feet rise. Okay, and then my distance out to my batter board okay from edge of wall that's 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 what's important i have 20 foot and one more inch because i came in an inch so 20 foot at one inch what i marked what i was measuring was the back side of that sill so from the front of that sill is 20 foot one inch plus the four foot jog there okay so 24 foot one inch as my run 24 foot one inch as my run and then I press the diagonal button that's it 
34 feet that's that's where i need to see and where they cross so my tape measure over there is right on the corner and 34 feet right where they cross right there that's what i'm going to mark my pencil and i'm pulling tight so this intersection right here and right here that creates a perfect 90 degrees makes my building my uh, uh, square and then since this is the same as finished floor same as there that's the level so that's important that the tape measure is level uh, from here all I need to do is measure over 24 feet to that batter board and I got my marks over there so that was uh, right triangle mouth. Rise, run, diagonal. Okay, there are other methods, a uh, three, four, five, and other things, but I like the longest triangle. Uh, making sure I remembered to add that inch to my calculation. Otherwise, it'd be right here on this face uh, of the two by four. So that's where I want that. So that's right triangle math. All right, now that I got my line on, so I got my dry line from center of beam, center of beam, I can measure over four foot from my nail, be four foot, one inch. I'm actually gonna make a little mark, four foot, one inch. on my string I can just level down or if I had my plumb bob I can just plumb bob down right like and that's gonna be close enough for that right there Plumb, back, plumb down the other direction. Right there. Okay. Since I'm going to be drilling anyhow, there's no sense in getting too creative with it. If I'm within a half inch of drilling for a three foot footing, I'm going to be okay. The one thing I do like to draw, spray out, is get a little radius of where three feet is. So, right there. Then I'll end up doing the same thing to the other one. Make sure that's in the right spot. I still got two more footings to lay out over here and one more over here. This particular one. <laughs> That's funny, I got that on camera. <laughs> That's my wife and her friend, so. Uh, not like I'm too special, but that's kind of nice. So we got this footing right here is gonna be right in the middle of my, my sidewalk. So it's a beam going this direction and a beam going that direction. So what I decided to do, since I don't want a, a post right in the center of my, my sidewalk, I decided to move it two feet over, just the post. The beams above stay in the same spot. So what that means is it's gonna cantilever out two feet and nine feet going that direction. I feel very confident in that. The connections I'll have, uh, as well as the, the connection to the house, there'll be an uplift force on that instead of a downward force. So. Uh, I'll design that bucket so it uh, withstands both of those forces in it. And then over there, I haven't decided I might do batter boards of some sort to help me get my lines. And we'll go from there. So that one's taken care of. This, these two are taken care of. Um, next, these two over here. I'll give you a little shot of this i'm going i got a nail down on the 
edge of the sill plate. It's got a two by four right here. You can also use a, a concrete stake, but I got it lined up right on that edge. It also gave me grade, but if you're wondering, so this edge is the edge of my sill plate, which is also the edge of the foundation. How do you go about uh, tying that in place? Well, I'll show you. So I wrapped it around one time. I'm gonna make it a little taut. Wrap it around twice. Same thing for a wood stake or a, a concrete stake. Now I'm gonna grab it, roll it up over on top of it, just like that. You can do the exact same thing for a round concrete stake. But I'll give you a little tying, tying a little simple method for tying string line. So the friction of it going up and over right here is what keeps that from slipping. So now that I have a line right here, I can measure out my seven feet and that seven feet would be to the edge of beam. So I got to make sure I'm paying attention to that. And uh, the beam that I want here going around is four inch wide. I don't need six inch wide. Uh, so, so four inch wide going around. Uh, which is, excuse me, that's a four by material, so three and a half inches wide. Uh, so half of that is where the center of my posts are going to be, or columns. Center of my footing, how's that? And so also I have center of this, and it's square to my foundation. Okay, um, I'll go ahead and I'm going to show you a three, four, five method. Which is, an, which is just as equally as accurate depending on uh, how precise you make your marks. So from that center right here, if I came over three, so say three feet, so three, four, I'm gonna come over four on this one. I'm gonna make a mark three foot out. We'll do it marker. So three foot out and I can do all sorts of increments of three four five so I can multiply those three numbers by ten and go 30 feet 40 feet 50 feet but what the main thing is is that diagonal is the five so in this case right here on the corner I gotta put a little nail it just can't helps when you're when you have help so kneeling right on the corner i'm gonna tap it up so it's straight up and down i'm gonna hook my tape measure on it right here so it's just a double check and i'm at exactly five so i know that i'm square it's a good check but I prefer the rise, run, and diagonal because I can do the full lengths and exact lengths. So with this one now, I'm going to measure over seven feet. That would be the outside edge. Plus this will give me my, my direction out there. All right, we're all done for layout for our footings for our back, for our uh, future patio. I got a little uh, footing that's gonna go there, two foot footing, two foot diameter, two foot diameter. And we have these over here. I had to adjust them because one direction I had on center line, the other had a uh, edge of post. So therefore I need to come over to center of beam. So had to adjust it just a little bit so i got one there same thing did the same thing over there so you know make sure you're double checking i guess the rule is that that make sure you're double checking so you're making the measurements uh, i want the center of this to be at the center of the post 
the intersection of the beams not uh, edge center of edge so uh, so that's what we did here and I had to adjust this one same thing over there no harm no foul uh, until it's drilled and hardened gray so that's our layout and you can see for as far as I got a batter boards there this one I'm just gonna have be measuring and uh, and whatnot I'll have my laser so I can get my grades and all that sort of thing got a batter board over here it is from edge because everything from edge is seven foot seven foot to the outside corner of the beams so I had to come in half of that that two and in, in there by the way hopefully you enjoyed hopefully you learned a little something uh, hopefully you like this portion of the layout uh, the next video in this area will be me drilling and forming those uh, those footings and columns so thanks for watching the home build and like always uh, hit that subscribe button if you if you like what you see um, that way it tells YouTube to hey you want to watch more videos as well as that bell it notifies you if I make new videos and post new videos so and it really helps me out if you press that uh, like button I want to know if you like it add any comments let me know what you think uh, I'm a carpenter my name is Corey Rogers and I've been a carpenter for 23 years and this is what I love this is what I do and I also love teaching others so thanks for watching